minutes and they've come back. Three nil was the final score in that match. Jolson Dalla scoring a blaze, uh, a brace brother. Uh, Cedric, what did you make of his performance so far? Four goals in the tournament. A silent player that has come here actually to mark his pace. He's mm -hmm. now fitting into the shoes of the likes of Manucho. Mm -hmm. He's fitting into the shoes of like of Flavia. Remember, those are mm -hmm. the kind of player that has scored more than three goals for Angola. Mm -hmm. And they are kind of player that has carried like uh, Flavio carried Angola to World Cup stage. Yes. Here he's another go uh, another Flavio that has been born in Angola. And I know back at Angola, maybe the jubilation still continue up to now. Maybe until Mm -hmm. their quarter uh, quarter final stage but if you go by how this team has deployed their player again yes. he also has some support around him mm -hmm. if, if where he's not really being uh, shiny yes we can see the likes of uh, Gilberto coming to fall yes where he's not being seen we can see the likes of Mabululu mm -hmm. coming to show and who are these supplying this kind of player with the balls Fred is there this player who plays in Bastictas in, in yes. Turkey He's so much firm on ball. His mm -hmm. concentration levels are very so high. And if you go by how Angola has scored goal, at any given time, the ball has either come from Gilberto mm -hmm. or Fred. These yes. are the kind of midfielders who are quiet, but they are supplying ball. Their assist is really playing a very bigger role to the likes of Gerson Dalla mm -hmm. to score for Angola. And you try to look into this Angola team yes. and the composition that they have, mm -hmm. starting from the defense, midfield to the strike. I think the Mambululus, the Jelson Ndala, yes. the Gilberto, they are also enjoying the concentration the defense is really giving them. It's only one lapse. And I remember even actually surging into your social uh, media handle, yes. trying to ask you what was this Gaspar doing at that particular defensive? Because at that particular time, any defense will take away, will quell away that kind of pressure. I think Jelson Dalla, mm -hmm. as I say, he has become a goal poacher to the tournament. Yes. And he has become a goal poacher to the extent that he knows how to position himself. He knows where to run and where to get that particular ball. And his partnership and Mabululu is now chemistry that is kindly working. You cannot talk about Angola without mentioning Mabululu at the moment. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. creating spaces for his uh, fellow uh, attackers. You see, I think Al Itihad, uh, yes. the uh, Egyptian club, mm -hmm might have even uh, skyrocketed uh, his value mm -hmm. to an essence of how he's playing in this particular tournament. These are kind of a player that has given us a banana curve for the, for the first time in the tournament since the tournament started. Mm -hmm. How many players, major, high pedigree players do we have in this tournament that have not scored a score like what he did yesterday? Yes. You have the likes of Osiemen. Mm -hmm. He has never given us a call. We heard the likes of Baghdad Buneja who really <laughs> bolted out with the Algeria. Yes. Neither did he, no matter how essence that he found that one on one space with the goalkeeper, gave us a banana cow. You know, this majority of strikers fear banana cow because you can end you are up. are not sure. Yeah. But here is a player who has given us a goal to talk about. Something that somebody can really watch and say, wow, in Africa. Somebody trading in Africa. Remember, he's not playing outside the African continent. Mm -hmm. He's just trading in Egypt. Egypt yes. But on an one, the confidence that he has in front of goal on an one or a goalkeeper, if he can round, take that ball around the goalkeeper and give us a goal, he tells even Nigeria, going to face Angola, it, was, it will not be, be a walk in the park. Mm -hmm. It will not be a walk in the park. So, those are the results from yesterday. Angola with a 3 nil win against uh, Namibia. And... Uh, Nigeria with a 2 0 win against Cameroon. So let's take a look at the fixtures that we have for the day. Two fixtures to be specific. And at 11 p.m. it will be DR Congo taking on Egypt. I want us to get into that fixture, Cedric. DR Congo versus uh, Egypt. The most successful team in Africa without their talisman, Mo Salah, who is out of the competition. If they probably proceed, he will be coming back. And then you have... Uh, uh, the Leopards of DR Congo. Very, very interesting time. So, I want us to first begin with the players to watch uh, for the Egyptian side. Now that Mo Salah is not there, uh, Cedric, I want you to take us through what to expect from uh, these players. Egypt players to watch. We start with one man, Mamush. Yeah, we saw what he has done. I think he has had two shots in the game. He has won so much more tackle. Mm -hmm. He has carried the ball actually to the danger area. And we yes. have seen 
him becoming so dangerous when he's in the, in the, in the, in the, in the D area. Yes. He has compli complimented Mustafa uh, Mohammed and made Mustafa Mohammed actually to shine. Mm -hmm. You ask me on a personal opinion, I will tell you that Mustafa Mohammed will never be shining if Mamush was not playing alongside him. Because mm -hmm. we have seen him in the tournament that he has not had, I think in 20, 2019, yes. he was still there and he was a kind of a player that I would all keep on casting my spells on mm -hmm. simply because he ended up not giving the Egypt, no matter whatever uh, chances they created in front of goal, goals that they required. But now here, they have the likes of Mamouche, mm -hmm. who will drive the ball into that particular danger area. And instead, and also uh, being unselfish, unselfish like, mm -hmm. instead of him taking the shot by himself, yes. he opted to pass to the likes of Mustafa Mohammed, mm -hmm. who now has become a goal poacher, going by the essence of it. He has the kind of a player who has made Egypt to take three consecutive draws in their group stages that made them actually to grace this mm -hmm. knockout stage. El Shanawi, everybody will be looking at him. He's been conceding, which means they don't have a defensive, solid defense. defensive cover. Yes. And I needed to tell you that because anyone who has that uh, soccer understanding mm -hmm. uh, will and again not really point an accusing finger to El Shanawi. Mm -hmm. You will start to study uh, the, the, the likes of uh, uh, Hegazi yes. at the center back. Mm -hmm. What are these experiences that they are really bringing into this particular Egyptian? Remember, yes. with all those years that he has played for the Egyptian, he's the one who should be commanding that line and making it uh, work easy for the likes of Shanawi. We have known El Shanawi as one of the best, best goalkeeper in Africa, yes. and he has done wonderful for Egypt. If mm -hmm. you go by how he really played in 2019, at some moment, at, at, at some point, one would think that Uganda would host Egypt in the round of 16. But mm -hmm. it's the same, same lad that really kept Egypt into the game and made Egypt sojourn to a semi-final up to, yeah, I, I think up to the semi-final of that particular t tournament. Mm -hmm. And this then went on to lose yeah. the uh, final, the next uh, tournament. The, the next tournament, yes. uh, again, again Senegal. Yes. I think if he can be covered very well and the mistake and the undoing the Egyptian that really has, and that is the weakness and then the advantage that the DRC need to utilize is their uh, center for. Mm -hmm. Their center for, including their center backs, they are not really communicating. They are not really stable enough mm -hmm. to give the command that Egypt has really had over years. Mm -hmm. And at this particular point, if they continue playing like that, remember, this DRC team is not a team to play around with you go around the DRC team, you will get to understand that it has got so much. that you've mentioned DRC. That you like. Let's take a look at the players to you know, to look out for this evening for the Democratic Republic of Congo. You cannot go without mentioning uh, Mbemba at the back. You have Wisa coming in from the wings and also you have Cedric Makambu, your namesake. Yes, these are the people that you know have been very, very integral. Yes, they have a lot of players that could have picked out for but we picked on these three. What are you expecting from them? Quite instrumental. And I like how you have picked uh, the three because mm -hmm. you are literally made at, as in a composition of a team. Yes. Picked a striker, defender, two strikers, I think, and a, and a uh, defender. Because yes. sometimes when... But sometimes it drops into midfield. Midfield, that is, uh, yeah. Wisa. That's now the utility that this team has. Because mm -hmm. in Wisa, he mm -hmm. can as well as play at a, uh, as a number nine, mm -hmm. and at some point he can really play as a midfielder as a playing number nine. Yes. But in the second game, we saw Cedric Bakambo becoming so-called. Mm -hmm. That's why the likes of Sila came in. Mm -hmm. And remember, I still feel like Sila is the best opt player compared to Cedric Bakambo mm -hmm. in this particular tournament. You still have uh, mm -hmm. Bayele. Yeah, Fist on Maele. Yes. Uh, this, they came in actually Fist on Maele and Sila, Sila and yes. they controlled the game against Morocco. Remember mm -hmm. Morocco had gone one up yes. and they were really struggling to find as in that touch mm -hmm. in front of Morocco's goal. When these two players came in, things turned around and we could see now this DRC pushing. Going by the statistics, mm -hmm. I have seen Chancel Mbemba being touted as one of the most ball carrier in this tournament. Mm -hmm. Remember he's a From defender. Defense, yes. Yeah. And that tells you, moving forward is a kind of a player who can really put their defensive progressive behind and start playing like a midfielder. Ball carrying means he can transverse, transverse through midfield and supply balls to Wissa, mm -hmm. supply ball to Cedric Bakam if he will be playing, or mm -hmm. maybe Sila, or maybe Fiston Maele, mm -hmm. if they will. But there, 
back for the likes of uh, Maswaku, yes. the likes of Kalulu, the li and I also hoped that Enoch uh, Inonga, Henok Inonga Inoga. comes back because they partnered well against Morocco. Mm -hmm. They partnered well with Ch uh, Chancellor Mbemba to bring that solid, uh, the sol uh, the sol sol solid right. defense yeah. yes. that we really needed from them. And remember, I will keep on reminding you, Barobi, that if your defense click, mm -hmm you will end up winning the tournament. The history between these two teams, uh, the, the, the DR Congo and, uh, Egypt. and, and, and Egypt, yes. is, it, it's, it's, it separates them at a very uh, integral bit of time mm -hmm. that when Egypt plays in the desert environment, it becomes so little. Mm -hmm. But when Congo plays in a sub-Sahara environment, mm -hmm. it, hosts, it, 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 it turns to host uh, Egypt. Yes. And this is now the time for Congo trace to occasion, but they are playing in their family environment. They need actually to bring their air game. Now that they have played in Morocco, being a northern country, yes. they are facing again Egypt in there. Mm -hmm. If they happen to beat Egypt, they will now become so dangerous because they will be sending a statement to these other teams that they have really managed to kill two giants mm -hmm. using one stone. Two giants are using one stone. So, the other fixture that we have for the day, we'll see Equatorial Guinea taking on Guinea. Yes, Cedric. A very, very interesting fixture that we have here. And I know every, everybody will be out to look at the top scorer of the tournament so far. Who am I talking about? Emilio Sue. This is the man that is on top of the scoring charts. All eyes will be on this to see what trouble can he cause for Equatorial Guinea against Guinea. Yeah, and they, I think in a tournament, if you become so dangerous, uh, the tactics behind any team will be to lock you out mm -hmm. because now you are the danger man. But what teams does not, or technical bench does not understand that if you advise your player to start locking out one man, you, you are reducing your team. Yeah, your team become lame. Mm -hmm. Because for you to lock out now this danger man, you need to deploy, like every time he has a ball, you deploy two markmanship. Mm -hmm. And that means, players, that, yes. that means that you will be playing with a team like he's really exposed, a team that is carrying a red card, mm -hmm. which is an advantage again to Equatorial Guinea. But if you go by the statistics, it will again tell you that this is the only team for the four occasions that it has graced the Africa Cup of Nations, mm -hmm. it has never uh, bolted out without gracing the knockout stage. Mm -hmm. And it literally tells you that facing uh, Guinea, which has been bolting out at the knockout stage in every four occasions he has graced this particular tournament, it becomes a super on paper. Mm -hmm. And that mentality, if it happens actually to sink into the play and also give it to advantage that it has played one of the so-called super teams in the tournament, the likes yes. of Ivor Coast. Putting four goals behind Ivor Coast does not actually uh, 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 just wash away like anything else. It really brings up the spirit of the team. And I think this team gracing this particular uh, match, mm -hmm. it will be gracing knowing that if we can manage to beat Ivor Coast, yes. who are these Guinea that are coming to stop us? I think the likes of Diawara, the likes of ne, uh, Nabi Keita, mm -hmm. the likes of uh, Ilex Ile, or yes. Umriba, yes. they need to be knowing that they are not really facing the, any other underdog in this tournament. Mm -hmm. Underdogs are gone. The teams that are remaining in this tournament, they equally have the pedigree yes. of going far, as far as, as winning the tor tor tournament. Yes, time for prediction. Who's winning? Equatorial Guinea versus Guinea? Equatorial Guinea will win again. Equatorial Guinea. Guinea will win. And the big one, Congo. DR Congo versus Egypt. <laughs> It's hard to call. Yes. Egypt has always been grinding points through penalties in several, uh, several uh, tournaments that it has grinded the past four tournaments. Mm -hmm. And I think at this particular time, I will put my cards on uh, DR Congo. Congo. The Leopards will see whether they will be singing Fimbu at the end of the day. Thank you very much, Cedric Msuba, for giving us insights on what we expect in the matches that we have for the day, as well as uh, taking us through what, trans <coughs> I beg your pardon, what transpired yesterday in the two matches that we had on the cards. Nigeria sailing through to the quarterfinals, as well as Angola. Tonight, uh, Egypt takes on DR Congo, and at 8 p.m. Kenyan time, it will be Equatorial Guinea taking on Guinea. Very, very interesting fixtures that we have on the cards, and that is where we wrap, up, we wrap it up here on Scotland. My name is Robinson Okenye. Have a good afternoon. Brought to you by One X Bet.